Hi, I'm Jake. I have a long neck. Hi, I'm Nick. I have really short legs. And we hope you guys all enjoy the Respawn Recap. Let's get into it. And first up this week, Nicholas. The feud does continue between two of our top, which could be returning Twitch streamers. We'll talk about that in, of course, a future segment. That being Ninja, wherever he might go at the point of us recording, we do not know. But that being the Tifu and Ninja feud, which was slightly re-sparked just this past week, as Ninja, within the first few hours of the brand new Fortnite season, calls out Turner right away for complaining. Later that night, Tifu comes out and says he actually finds the new season pretty fun, but the beef it still continues between who could be, you know, returning Twitch streamer, could be taking viewership away. I'm, I'm very interested to see how Ninja does pull viewership if he does go back to Twitch. Me too. I was, I was going to say, though, they're always just like starting up something no matter what, like no matter the size of whatever, as long as there is drama to be made there, they're going to go for it, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like, honestly, this time it was more so Ninja. Uh, than yeah. Tifu, but again, you know, Turner could have actually seen that clip and then later he could have said, I actually like this season just to try and combat what Ninja said. <laughs> it keeps on being very interesting. We'll end it on this though, because just within the past couple of days as well, it was actually Tifu taking to Twitter showing how absolutely jacked he has become. I saw that. I saw that. That was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instantly you think about, huh? Yeah, you know, in a, a couple months ago when you challenged Ninja to a fight, I maybe would have given Ninja a shot if he put in the right <laughs> training. But the way Tifu's looking, Tifu is, looking built, it's, it's uh. making you reconsider things. Will the fight ever happen? Probably not. Will the complaints between these two ever stop? Probably not. And next up, when it comes time for top personalities out there for each and every esport, we can probably certainly think of names. When it comes time for Call of Duty individually, we think of Scump, right? Or at least someone to. along the likes of a guy like Scump. We have now confirmed in the past week he took to a podcast with Hector Rodriguez as well as gave several hints on Twitter. Officially, guys, he has been fined by the Call of Duty League for calling this current Call of Duty Modern Warfare the worst to be ever made. And I'm not really sure how to bounce this off you, Nick, because there are certainly two sides but what do you think about a top personality and figure for your game being fined for calling your game just that bad? There's definitely two sides. Um, you know, it, it doesn't look good for, for a company to have their, their professional players saying those things about them. But every person is entitled to their opinion. And, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people would agree with his opinion. Yeah. Um, especially in terms of, like, competitive Call of Duty. Uh, but I, I feel like a, a fine is, is, a bit, is a bit much considering... I don't know. Like, he said it's the worst Call of Duty, right? I yeah. get that. And uh, I feel like if I was Activision, I'd look at that and be like, okay, what did we do wrong for him to say that? Not let's punish Scump. Yeah. Or, I don't know. And in this case, individually, it, 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 it was the league. So it, it depends how you look at this. And with Call of Duty fines also not being public, we don't know how far these pros can push things. We don't know what other pros have been fined. I think the ultimate statement is, though, should a player be fined by the league for hating on the game in the way he did? You know, can you... Is there a way to avoid this by constructively giving criticism? Uh, or at what point is yes. that line crossed, even right. by a guy like Scump, you know? And so I'm very curious if other pro players out there know what they can and cannot say. Obviously with League of Legends and Overwatch, those fines are very much public, so they have probably a bit more grounds as to know what they can and cannot say. Anytime though a top pro and personality is gonna get fined for calling their current game very bad, we'll be covering it. We'll see what Scump says from here on out. And another thing only pertaining to the Call of Duty scene we don't really see elsewhere, that being the use of mods and professional play brought to light in Call of Duty also this past week. If you guys are not familiar with the Cronus mod, it's used for crossplay. That being, uh, I believe it's actually for PS4 controllers to be able to play on Xbox One. There's also other things about this mod that make it and give it uh, great advantages for those who use it. For those of you guys also unaware, Cronus mods have been used in Call of Duty in the past to try and avoid Bluetooth interference. So it's a way to actually have a, a hard wire for your controller, technically, to avoid Bluetooth interference on LANs. So that's uh, why it was actually first introduced. Most recently brought to light, though, are Call of Duty pro accusations, whether it's top AM pros or potentially some Call of Duty League pros, using this for other benefits, which include an anti-recoil um, and other things as well. I do apologize, guys. There's so many details when it comes to a Cronus mod, but we have statements out there by several pro players potentially accusing entire teams of using the Cronus mod for for these benefits which it, it it's tough to understand because we don't really deal with this in any other esport so it's tough to understand where do we go from here how do we check for this how yeah. do we fix it with a lot of esports call of duty included being online and i've seen a lot of people saying that the cronus mod is basically like undetectable uh and i i saw like the videos that they put out with uh you know the, the anti-recoil or the the, the recoil the comparison? reduction I say. yeah yeah and i was like okay yeah like if I was staring at that as a spectator, I'd be like, yeah, I probably would be able to tell that they were using that. So, man, 
that that is kind of wild to see uh, accusations against an entire team using it. Yeah, and that was just uh, one tweet pertaining to it. Yeah. I guess to bounce off what you said as well, even Clayster, other top pros have come out and said, how do we detect this? Other pros have said, okay, so when it comes back to land eventually, we're gonna have to even go by player by player and check if they're using a Cronus mod. Yeah. And that's it, like if we go back to land for Call of Duty and they're not required because of Bluetooth interference. So I'm not sure where we go from here. It's just very interesting to see as we cover more in esports, more and more esports, there's only certain things pertaining to certain esports out there, and the Cronus mod pertains to Call of Duty. Ah, we'll keep this one short there, guy. That, that was not a jab. I swear. I was not, I was not, oh, I'm, I'm so. I put up with this every day, Jake. I honest, anyway, I'm uh, speaking about beef starting between people out there. That's gonna be G2 CEO Ocelot. You know, I think we're slowly kind of creeping into the time where we see not only social media teams, especially in the League of Legends scene, but also CEOs being involved in beef back and forth. This past week, it was actually Nade Shot halfway taking on. Uh, uh, G2 as he actually blocked G2 social media team. We had Ocelot also kind of sub quote tweeting that as well and it, it kind of like a halfway response. And then Ocelot even further in a random reply calling out FaZe Clan saying they're nowhere even close to G2 and that they effing suck. Um, so to you I ask, are we going to see a slowly more of these personality CEOs or at least, you know, upper management people for organizations kind of take their step forward into this kind of thing? Maybe. Ocelot's a little different because he's a pro player previously and he's kind of already been in the scene and kind of already well re recognized, I guess. And, and he knows so how it works, dude. Exactly. And so is Nate Shot. And I love both of them. You know, I love both 100 Thieves and G2, but man, I, I love seeing this like from ocelot i just love those jabs at them don't you i do it's funny like he's he's good at it too like i think it's i just think it's hilarious to look at and it's definitely become i don't mean to make this comparison probably is not for the reasons you guys think but i think he is becoming kind of the personality of like a phase banks where he can almost huh. say these really extreme and, and funny things and people are not going to think about that the same way if like a guy it's always my reference point if a guy like ninja said phase effing sucks he would be brutally targeted but Ocelot, but it's says Ocelot. It, and it's, it's Ocelot. So I think he's slowly developing that kind of thing, and I, I cannot wait to break down. You know, if Nade Shot ever responds, if Hunter Thieves responds, if you guys have not caught this from the League of Legends scene specifically, social media teams are starting to target CEOs and organizations. And, Take them down. And we'll keep yeah. bringing it up to all of you guys. It's just great to see uh, ever expanding personalities in the esports scene. <laughs> Is that, is that even a flute? I don't even know. I was playing the clarinet. <laughs> I don't know what part you're going to use of that. Uh, unfortunately, so we saw this past week as well. And I say unfortunately because there are a lot of sides of this. That being the biggest story I'm sure you guys are aware of. That being Mixer shutting down come this July. Ninja and Shroud, at the point of us recording, have not committed to a new platform. Who knows where they will go? I think, you know, when I saw this headline, I, I'm sure when you saw it as well, just it was shock. Not so surprised, shocking, but yeah, not surprised. but the point of this happening, it was it was pretty shocking, right? Right. Uh, we now know that it happened pretty last second. I, I think we can pretty much confirm that the top names of the platform, like Ninja, Shroud, Gathalion, they knew it was coming. Everyone else did not. They found out at the moment the news did break, and I don't really know what else to say about this, right? It's, yeah. I think the the big question is like you already mentioned it. Will Shroud and Ninja return to Twitch? I immediately just want to say yes it's like where else are you gonna go you're not gonna go to facebook yeah <laughs> and they've not, already denied facebook yeah so exactly so. so it's like uh, that's that's not really an option for them i think so I, and it, it starts so many other talking points which i'm sure we'll get to in the future uh when you have these two big names and already it was a war right it was certainly twitch versus mixer was the talking point now it's obviously it has been for a while twitch versus youtube you throw facebook in there maybe some other platforms mixer is officially done and we now have two titans maybe coming back to their former audiences maybe choosing a different platform yet and they get a cash out within eight to ten months 30 and 10 million dollars obviously continuing strives for the for the platform and gaming entirely it is sad to see that thousands of others will lose their jobs because of this and we can only hope the best in other stream platforms picking up the, the remains of what is now Mixer. As, As per usual, usual, shut the... <laughs> <laughs> we hope you guys all enjoy the Respawn recap. Nicholas, give it to him. Later. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, see you. I, uh, uh, love Nick. you. Love you. I love you. No, I, I didn't. Love no. You. Goodbye. <laughs>